So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology. Welcome to the iPhone SE versus the S22 Ultra speed test. Now this one doesn't have to make sense. This is for entertainment purposes. Let's go ahead and boot this up in three, two, go. And the reason why I wanna make this is I, I'm interested to see how close is the cheapest iPhone you can buy in terms of brand new at the Apple store versus Samsung's latest highest end flagship S23 is only a couple months out, I know. But already you can see Apple's cheaper iPhone SE boots up way faster than the Galaxy S22 Ultra. I used to do speed tests like, like this a lot where we would do the cheaper iPhone versus the premium Samsung. Let me know if you wanna see a cheaper Samsung versus a very premium iPhone. All right, so let's see how fast they do open their lock screens, you can see pretty similar. I will tell you that we can now compare the fingerprint. We have a hardware-based Touch ID versus an in-display here for the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Let's go ahead and do that. And looks like it was pretty close. We'll do it again, three, two, go. Looks like the S22 Ultra a little faster. Three, two, not that time. So we'll do it again. Well, maybe it's Touch ID. I think Touch ID is a little more reliable because you can just feel it out. Okay, now Touch ID is showing me up here. Animation speed a little faster on S22 Ultra, but I know someone's gonna say, you don't need to unlock the phone to do that. You could just go like that on the S22 Ultra. And I know you could do that, but with the SE, you have to press down. So I think once you get the hang of the S22 Ultra, it's a little faster, but the SE, because it's hardware based, you don't even have to look at it. You could just be pulling out of your pocket and that thing unlocks. And surprisingly, even though this phone is like the cheaper iPhone, it still kind of feels premium because of the aluminum rails, glass back. Even though it looks old, it still feels pretty good. It doesn't really match up to this, obviously, but it definitely feels quite nice. Now, we are running the latest version of iOS 16.1.1 on here. And this is coupled with an Apple A15 Bionic chipset. Well, we just got a new update, 16.1.2, but for this video, it was still 16.1. The Galaxy S22 Ultra is running the latest One UI 5 on board, so that's pretty good as well. And overall, you know, you don't have the 120 hertz on the SE, but you know, you don't really need it here. It's pretty smooth anyway. The S22 Ultra smoother though, with it's 120 hertz just scrolling through. But overall, these phones actually are quite close in just everyday scrolling. All right guys, so here we are at the app test. Everything closed out for both phones, 56%, 79%. We'll go into calendar, virtually the same. We'll go into calculator, pretty similar. We'll go into clock, close. I think the SE might be a hair quicker there. We'll go into weather. Virtually the same. We'll go into Play Store, App Store, Samsung on that one. How about games? Virtually the same. We'll go into Instagram. Instagram loading a little faster on the right. Homepage now to the SE. Overall, smoother scroll on the left, and we have a faster scroll on the right. We'll go into Twitter. You can see Twitter. Definitely performing well on both phones. Scrolling through, let's go into Groupon. You could see a little hair quicker on the Samsung. Things to do. Man, this SE is pretty impressive for the price though. But the Samsung clearly the more premium flagship, but it costs three times as much, obviously. We'll go into Best Buy. And you could see that's first on the left. So in some areas, the SE a little faster, some the Samsung. But if you like that classic iPhone look, man, you want that classic look, you'll definitely want the SE. That thing's a beast. That Samsung's a beast as well. If you want that Note look, you want that S Pen in the body, that S22 Ultra is for you, for sure. Beautiful phone. Both of them can do games well, but there's no way I would pick the SE to enjoy my gaming experience. This is more like a tablet on the right. We'll go into Asphalt 9. I'm playing games all day, every day on the Sammy Boy. 
when it comes to this comparison, even though the SE in this speed test does look faster than the Galaxy over here. So it might be quicker, but it's not more enjoyable to play games on. So do keep that in mind. It doesn't it doesn't just come down to, you know, stuff like that. That's not my real age. I'm just putting that for the to blaze through this really quickly here. But we tap to play on both of them. Again, a full screen for playing Subway Surfers or whatever you want to play. I'm going to enjoy it much more on the right going the crossy road. But this is not a full comparison between these two. This is to see how well does the cheapest iPhone do against the most premium Samsung phone. And you can see it's not a big deal of difference. You know, honestly, Apple doesn't let any of their phones run slow. And this is proof of it right here. You can see, um, yes, I am. We'll go ahead, click here. Both of them can play the game, no problem. It looks like the SE performs just about as fast as the S22 Ultra. However, it doesn't have nearly as much RAM. So when it comes to serious usage and productivity usage, the Samsung faster here. The Samsung is a faster phone. Let's go out of here. We'll go into 3D Mark Wildlife and you could see pretty close. So overall, I don't think it really beats the Samsung, but it definitely, it definitely um, was performing about the same. So for like 300 bucks or so versus like a thousand dollars, you're getting about thousand dollar performance on that phone on the left. All right, so let's check to see how they perform when it comes to going back through these applications. So we'll do it here on the iPhone SE to see if there's any reloads and looks pretty good so far. The SE is a super usable phone, even though it doesn't have that new look. It's funny because if somebody's seen you with this, they would think, oh, he has the iPhone 8 or he has iPhone 6, but little do they know you got the A15 CPU, same one that's in the iPhone 14 model, rocking that performance with that classic body, no issues there, butter. Let's go on to the Samsung here and we'll see how this does. Samsung has improved animations, still not perfect, but was that a reload? Well, I don't know. Still not perfect, but much better than before. Definitely Samsung solid now with how smooth it looks going back through these. I think they got a little work to do still. Still not exactly where I want it, but it's it's pretty darn close. It's almost like it's only like a couple points away from being flawless. So very good on both here. And here are our final Geekbench scores: 1742 single on the SE, 836 single on the Samsung. Now, when it comes to the multi-core score, you could see it's not even close. The SE blows away the Samsung device. But what I wanna see is the wildlife test because this one right here is definitely gonna be more indicative of the frame rates and stuff like that. So I'll be back when they're done with this test. So when it comes to wildlife extreme, the SE also wins it out here. So it did 2287 on the overall score versus 1884 on the Samsung over here in this test. So average frame rate was also higher on the SE. So the actual gaming performance would probably be a little bit better on the SE. Funny enough, both of these phones are quite warm right now. The S22 Ultra is not a super cool to the touch phone when you are, you know, pushing it. Same with the SE due to that glass back. You know, it's not that cool to the touch either. But for the most part, these are super powerful phones right here. Both of them are going to be more than sufficient. But the cheapest iPhone is basically as powerful, if not more powerful in some cases, than Samsung's $1,000 plus phone. And I had this on the maximum processing speed for this video. So don't say, oh, you had that on optimized or you had that on slow. No, I didn't. Um, but clearly the SE is pretty much trash. If you want to talk about comparing the overall, you know, what you're getting here, you're getting way, way, way better cameras, much bigger battery life, S Pen on board, a huge display. This phone absolutely demolishes the iPhone SE. And obviously I wouldn't pick the SE over the S22 Ultra, but 
I just wanted to show that the performance on even the cheapest iPhone is very quick. I think this is what Samsung needs to do with the A series line. They need to make the cheapest, you know, Samsung phone quick as well. So let me know your guys' thoughts on this one. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace. Thank you.